Racing Spirit Association, 950 pounds with driver, 185 horsepower at the crankshaft. These cars are insane. All right, thank you, Darren Pallon, as we get ready to go back to action. Northern Lightning Sprints here at Red River Co-op Speedway. Also a class I raced a few years ago. Really How did you like it? It was uh, really interesting. It was totally different going to an open wheel car after being, you know, full-bodied all the time. That was uh, very different, but it was fun to drive, that's for sure. Scary? Uh, yeah, I had my share of nasty wrecks. It, uh, it can get pretty wild in those things. I went end for end more than once. Well, we've got a total of seven cars. Let's run through the lineup here really quickly. Starting on the pole, driving the number one, it's Chris Soren. On his outside, driving the number 11, it's Dexter Thevergston. In row number two, it's the 29 of Dylan Sabatini. And on his outside, the 10 of Alex Truchinski. In row three has the 13T of Alan Truchinski. And the 35W of Wally Butler's on his outside. Row four has the 2X of Oli Herman Trucks. in action here. One lap in, they've all kind of all spread out already. Oh, there's some good racing here off the four with the 13 and the 29. Soren still your leader in this one. These things are very fast. It's, uh, they'll, they'll proudly tell you that they're faster than the uh, modified with this car. <laughs> well, everybody wants to do that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they are very, very quick and aerodynamically stuck to the track. It's, uh, it's something else to drive for sure. Your leader driving the one car, that's Chris Soren in second spot in this race. Not far behind him, it's the uh, number 11 car of Dexter Diverston. They started one and two on the pole respectively. But not far behind, it's the 35W of Wally Butler. Now, Butler had that nasty crash here at River Cup Speedway just a few weeks ago. He's back in action. But uh, that 35 car is still working pretty good. Ward Embry jumped in it, his first start in that car on Sunday, and went out and won the feature in Morton. Of course, I was talking to Wally Butler just a day or two after the uh, accident. I asked Wally how fast he could get back up and operational, and he said within within a day. Yeah, you can rebuild these cars pretty quickly. It's uh, it's impressive, especially with a good crew like Wally does have. Butler in third in the uh, number four spot. It's Alex Truchinski. I believe that is a father and son team racing for fourth and fifth right now. It's uh, good to see. Well, the family's getting involved again, like we said earlier. Chris Soren, your leader. One lap to go. For him, half a lap. And Chris Soren pretty much wraps this one up. A victory for him here in this first heat race in the Northern Lightning Sprint Division. The Bergston kept him within sight, though. He was, uh, he was on it. So we'll see what happens here in the future when the track starts to slick off a little bit, maybe. Second spot in this one goes to the 11 car of Dexter Diverkson. Third goes to the number 35 of Wally Butler. And then it's a pair of Trushinskis as Alex and Allen finish up in fourth and fifth spot in this race. I'll tell you the most fun I had when I had in that uh, lightning sprint car that I had was uh, when I took the wings off and raced it as a midget or a micro midget you would call it. That was a really really fun time. Just really getting to slide the car around. It's not something you get to do with those big wings on it. So I've uh, I've told them that they keep to they keep telling them that they need to do it and they don't listen to me. <laughs> I think they've seen the videos of the midgets rolling and rolling and rolling because they don't have those big wings to absorb all that impact. Well, it's, it's, it's a good theory. Maybe not the best safety practice. No, and especially not at a big track like this. Uh, that would definitely be, yeah, could, could get bad.
second heat now of these Northern Lightning Sprints as they get ready to take the track. We are moving next up to the uh, late models or the NLRA heat races for tonight. Total of seven cars in this heat race. And starting on the pole, it's the 43 of Robert Livingstone. On his outside, driving the 33 uh, Lightning Sprint, it's Murray Temple. Row two has the 2R of Roland Bernard and the 7S of Brent Stagg. Row three, the 14 of Ed Bell and the 27 of Chris Unruh. And finally by himself on row number four, he's driving the 13, that's Al Giesbrick. That is your lineup here tonight for the Northern Lightning Sprints. Keep your eyes on that second row. The two and the seven have both been very quick this year. Roland Bernard, Brent Stank, veteran drivers in this class. And there they are on your screen. And Stang, of course, trying to make a move right away for second spot. Had to get out of it there. He almost did what they call following off of the right rear tire, which always ends badly. Murray Temple currently in the lead right now. Livingstone in second, followed by Stegg and Roland Bernard. Dylan yeah. Sabatini, pardon me, that's not Dylan Sabatini. If he was in last race. If Temple had beers right now, he would be smiling. <laughs> Seeing these guys fighting for second place is just allowing him to pull up a very nice lead. We'll see if Steg can get the job done on Livingstone. But Livingstone is driving a very good race. As they go around turns three and four right now, your leader, it's the 33 car, and the race is up front for the second spot as the 43, that's Robert Livingstone, and the 7S of Brent Stag are duking it out for second. I was very surprised to see that they're allowed the, uh, the remote wing adjustment so they can actually move the wing from in the cockpit to change the handling of the car. That's, uh, uh, I'm sure as the drivers, they really like being able to make that adjustment. Oh, here he goes around the outside. Oh, Ooh, that's a great race. The brakes. That was close. Stag looking to the outside. And slowly creeping up behind them in fourth spot right now, Roland Bernard. And he's definitely made up some ground. Only two laps to go, though. You're going to have to make it up quick. And if you're Murray Temple, you're happy how this race is going for you. Absolutely. Murray is fine tonight. He's got one lap to go. Stag looking to try to make his way around the 43. Livingstone holding him off. Your leader, your winner, driving the 33 car tonight, Murray Temple. Robert and Livingstone holding on to second. Good for him. Stag and Bernard finishing up in third and in fourth. And the fifth spot goes to the number 27 of Chris Unruh. Yeah, some very good racing there in the uh, NLSA. So some decent numbers in this class. Total of 14 cars here tonight, not too bad. Past years, we've actually had some smaller numbers here, but uh, these seem to be growing in size. Yeah, they've really changed the way they organized uh, their schedule. They, instead of racing at one or two tracks weekly, they race at six or seven tracks a few times a year. And uh, it's, it's very nice. They pair all, as many races together as they can on weekends, and it's a very nice manageable schedule. Well, the big race that many of you guys are watching here tonight is coming up next as we're going to go late model racing here at Red River Co-op Speedway. Late models tonight, we have a pretty big showing. A total tonight of 17 cars racing here at the Speedway. And they are lining up at the back uh, entranceway as they're getting ready to come on to the track. Lightning Sprints, of course, getting through the way scale right now. There's your winner, Murray Temple. A lot of talent here in Heat 1 of the late models tonight. It's going to be a fun one to watch. We're going to go through the lineup in just a few seconds as they get moving. Of course, uh, lots of people here tonight at Red River Co-op Speedway on a very hot, sticky kind of night. 
Yes, definitely. It was, uh, as, as Jackie Stewart would say, it is a great, great day for motorcar <laughs> racing. And uh, I couldn't agree more.